Hi guys, today I want to talk about a change of human brain sizes and a possible correlation with whoever created the megalithic structures. Brain size is one of the most obvious traits that make us human. The volume of the human brain has increased and nearly tripled as humans evolved for over 3 million years. With this dramatic brain size increase and the largest brain to body mass ratio, humans became the most intelligent mammals on the planet. We made tools, utilized the fire, built homes, and eventually started civilizations. However, not too long ago, scientists found a surprising reversal in our own species. That human brains have been decreasing for quite a while and its brain size decline is about five times faster than our body size changes, which means our intelligence level is potentially diminishing. Believe it or not, our brains are now the smallest they have been at any time in the past 100,000 years, over 10% smaller. The decrease is in contrast to the general evolutionary tendency of the human cranial capacity to increase. The timing and reasons for this decline are enigmatic. How and why did it happen? And how does this change of human brain size shine light on the age of the megalithic sites? 300,000 years ago, around the time of the rise of our species, the brains of Homo sapiens had about the same relatively large size as they do today. Researchers discovered that our brain size peaked 100,000 years ago and stayed stagnant for a while, then started to gradually decrease. Some say for the last 50,000 years, some say the last 40 or 12,000 years. Some argue that most of this decline occurred in the last 6,000 years. Some suggest the last 3,000 years. 100,000 years ago, the average brain size was about 1,550 cubic centimeters or cc compared to around 1450 cc 12,000 years ago. Many online sources state that our average brain size is 1350 cc today, though a 2007 study indicates that in men the brain volume is around 1260 cc and in women 1130 cc. That means we lost about 190 cc of brain, which is a bit bigger than the volume of a tennis ball. This is really shocking, isn't it? If our brain keeps dwindling at that rate, over the next 20,000 years, it will be approaching the size of that found in Homo erectus, a relative that lived half a million years ago and had a brain volume of only 1,000 cc. Over several decades, a large quantity of evidence has consistently shown that bigger brains tend to perform better at tasks related to intelligence. To clarify, it's not simply the size of the brain that is relevant here, but the size of the brain in relation to body size, referred as the encephalization quotient, EQ. Research has found a close relationship between intelligence and EQ. Hominin development has been marked as a result by increasing encephalization. The Neanderthals had even bigger brains than modern humans, though they also had a bigger body. Therefore, their EQ brain to body mass ratio is smaller than ours. Thus, the Neanderthals were probably less intelligent than modern humans. Some studies also point out that climate doesn't seem to affect the human brain size development. Thus, the glacial or interglacial periods may not matter much to the change of brain sizes. It's not clear why human brain size has been declining since the late Pleistocene. Nor do we know the impact, if any, to human cognition. Assuming relative brain size remained evolutionary advantages to human species, encephalization will likely have continued to increase. But our absolute brain size and encephalization have declined since 100,000 years ago, and have been reducing at an accelerated rate during modern periods. This decrease in cranial capacity is observed across the board to humans on every continent. Why did our brain size start to shrink? There have been different theories to try to explain the recent reduction in brain size. 
such as self-domestication, which means people became tamer and more docile to work with each other. Sexual selection, sociality, shifting cognitive demands to tools and technology, externalization of knowledge, group-level decision making, and emotional plasticity. These are all conjectures, and so far there is no definitive answer on this alarming, if not disturbing, phenomena. Archaic hominins like Homo erectus made stone tools and managed to create fire over a million years ago with a much smaller brain. For a hundred thousand years, the Paleolithic humans had greater cranial capacity and a higher EQ than modern-day humans, which indicates. That they were supposedly as intelligent as, or even more intelligent than us now, but somehow these people stayed in the Stone Age for almost a hundred thousand years. They made better stone tools than a small-brained Homo erectus, but basically lived a similar lifestyle with comparable ancient innovations like bone needles, fire hearths, and stone arrows. That implies the bigger brain size of Homo sapiens. Didn't really help with improving their overall quality of life. If this was the case, then what's the point of growing a bigger brain? Please remember that brain growth and upkeep take a lot of energy. For our predecessors to develop bigger brains, they needed high energy food. The consensus of scientists is that brains are extremely expensive to both grow and maintain. Hominins with larger brains had much higher resting metabolic rates. Even though the brain is only about two percent of our body weight, it consumes almost a quarter of our energy input. Large brain also increases the risk of death in childbirth. Evolutionary reasoning demands that species can afford to pay such hefty costs only if they are outweighed by commensurate benefits. There must be a tremendous benefit for human species to grow large brains, which are particularly energy-consuming. Humans didn't grow claws or long, sharp teeth. We don't run fast or climb as adeptly as many other animals. Our survival and dominance are due to the development of our brains. There is little doubt that a large human brain provides the machinery to execute complex cognitive tasks. Including tool making, forward planning, language use, innovation, and social perception. If so, then why did the large-brained Paleolithic people live like the small-brained Homo erectus, and were only able to make minimal progress on stone tool making for a hundred thousand years? If the significantly smaller brains of Homo erectus were already capable of creating stone tools. I imagine the archaic Homo sapiens, with their larger brains, should have accomplished much more. But yet we were taught that they remained in the Paleolithic period and didn't make notable innovations. The Paleolithic period, or the Old Stone Age, lasted for an incredibly long time. It extends from the earliest known use of stone tools by hominins 3.3 million years ago to the end of the Pleistocene. About eleven thousand six hundred and fifty years ago. Now there is a conflict. We know that bigger brains are extremely difficult to grow and maintain. If there is no substantial benefit, then hominin brains shouldn't have been growing for about three million years. The growth of human brain size signifies there was an immense benefit of having larger brains. Large brains, complex tools. And bipedalism are some of the hallmarks of the human features. Large brains and high encephalization should be beneficial to tool making. There ought to be positive correlations amongst brain size, tool making skills, survival rates, and overall species establishment. But even though the Homo sapiens brain increased and peaked around a hundred thousand years ago. There appear to be no significant technological advances around that time. Our ancestors stayed in the Paleolithic era for another eighty-eight thousand years until twelve thousand years ago. That means the larger brain didn't help in the improvement in tool making and other technical skills, which contradicts the theory 
that larger brains are evolutionary advantages and high encephalization generally indicates higher intelligence. However, mysteriously, during the following 12,000 years, the same group of people jumped from the Paleolithic period to Neolithic to Bronze Age, then Iron Age, all the way to Industrial Revolution, and built our modern society, well, with a smaller brain size. How did this happen? Why couldn't they make such technological leaps sooner? So our predecessors, the larger brain Homo sapiens, who were possibly as smart as or smarter than us, only used stone tools and didn't make much innovative growth for a hundred thousand years. Then, by some means, the same people progressed from stone tools to traveling to the moon and landing rockets on Mars in twelve thousand years. Are we to believe that? If twelve thousand years is the time needed to establish a modern civilization rising from the Stone Age with our current reduced brain size. Then there should have been plenty of time for our ancestors, who had higher EQ and bigger brains, to create something extraordinary too, right? But why is there no evidence of real ancient sophisticated productions, other than stone arrowheads? What if there always has been such evidence, though we don't see it for what it really is? What if the worldwide megalithic phenomenon? Was the creation of these ancient people with larger brains? These mysterious places could be footprints of this lost civilization. Most known ancient megalithic structures and sites are located in Eurasia, Africa, and South America. They include the Giza pyramids, Petra, Baalbek, Machu Picchu, Sacsayhuaman, Puma Pancu, Yangshan Quarry, Longyo Caves. And many more. Some sites show amazing precision cuts. Others contain huge stone blocks or giant caves, which engineers and architects find very difficult to explain how they were constructed by ancient manual labor. Almost all megalithic structures lack contemporaneous historical records, though that didn't deter people from making assumptions. For example, the Greek historian Herodotus. Who has been called the father of history, since he was the first historian known to collect his materials systematically. He admitted it that on many topics he was not an eyewitness, and he was reporting only what had been told to him. Maybe that's why he made some questionable and subsequently proven wrong claims, so much so that some people call him the father of lies. Herodotus wrote about the three great pyramids of Giza being built for the ancient Egyptian kings Khufu, Khafre, and Menkaure, respectively, by enslaving their people. King Khufu's reign was around 2600 BC. Herodotus wrote about the pyramids in 450 BC, which is over 2,000 years later. How did Herodotus get his source of information? We don't know. We need to consider how credible is Herodotus' two millennia later story on the construction of the Great Pyramid. He wrote about the Great Pyramid taking 20 years to build, and the base length is the same as the height. He thought iron was used during the construction. Now we know that the Great Pyramid's length and height are not the same, since the length is 83 meters or 272 feet longer. And if Herodotus was right about the pyramids' building time, then back then it was the Bronze Age with no iron. Herodotus probably tried his best with the information he had, and likely juiced it up to attract readers when he described it, the ancient structures and events, which happened in two thousand plus years before his time. Therefore, his account on pyramids may not be very trustworthy. Archaeological academia. However, subscribed it to Herodotus' claim and attributed the Great Pyramid to the dynastic king Khufu. What I'm saying is that the pyramids, among other magnificent megalithic sites, might have a much longer history. The constructions of the Egyptian pyramids, the massive stone boxes in Serapim, or the uniform tool marks in Longyo Caves or Petra, are highly advanced. 
Many experienced stonemasons and experts in the construction field have confirmed that these sites were not created by hand chisels. On the contrary, they exhibit signs of amazing sophistication that are on par or surpass our modern construction or mining machinery. These places are ancient. Their scopes of works are beyond slave labors, hand tools, or draft animals. Is it possible that these sites were the work of the larger-brained modern humans who lived for hundreds of thousands of years in the past? Earlier, I talked about the strange absence of superior tools, even though the late Paleolithic people had larger brain capacity. Humans evolved for millions of years and finally achieved a large brain size and higher cognitive ability. They should have accomplished a lot more than stone tools, because even the small brain Homo erectus had made flint tools over a million years ago. What if the megalithic sites were the remnants left from a previous sophisticated civilization created by our ancestors, the modern humans who were higher in civilized with larger brains? It seems that this civilization only left megalithic structures without other evidence. Why there are no artifacts, leftover tools, or machinery to be found? Assuming this civilization was built after the peak of the brain size, which is over a hundred thousand years ago, and it took about the same twelve thousand years to progress from Paleolithic to Neolithic, Bronze Age, Iron Age, and forward, then the machines created and used by this civilization would be about thirty thousand years old. Metal objects rust away fairly quickly, like in a few hundred to a thousand years or so. Surviving metal might be scavenged and recast later. Some metal might have deteriorated to a state where it looks like hematite. Also, remnants from that long ago would likely be buried either very deep underground, possibly under 20 meters or 66 feet of sediments, or submerged by water and sea. Though I think it's possible that we'll find some signs of ancient machinery in the future. Like how the over two thousand year old lost technology of the Antikythera mechanism got pulled out from an ancient Greek shipwreck. Okay, I'll wrap it up here. Let me know what you think of my hypothesis on a brain size change and what it might tell us about the megalithic civilization. I plan to make another video discussing the relationship between the Paleolithic settlements found by archaeologists and this possible advanced civilization. Please stay tuned. If you have any insights, please leave me a comment. If you like my video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the bell button so you'll be notified when I upload new videos. If you want to support me, my Patreon link is below. I have a wide range of topics that I want to share with you. This is Curious Being. I'm Tina. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.